What if I told you that you could buy a perfect machine that made you smarter and more productive? These machines could save you time. They could do all the necessary tasks around the home, your shopping, cooking, cleaning, and they could see to all your needs. They could do the unpleasant jobs, like the backbreaking work on the farm or the long dangerous shifts in the mines. They could teach your children and even keep the peace on the streets. They could do your paperwork and manufacture your goods. And for every job that these perfect machines do, it frees you up to do what you're passionate about. You could be a poet or a sculptor. You could build great buildings and monuments. You could be a scientist or a philosopher, developing new ways of looking at and understanding the world. Buying a machine like this is cheap and reliable. And if everyone buys enough of these machines, you could build a civilization so productive, so advanced that people would remember you thousands of years after you're gone. The ancient Greeks had machines like these, except as you can probably guess, they weren't machines like we understand today. These perfect machines that allowed the Greeks to become great were slaves. The ancient Greeks didn't invent slavery. There's evidence of slavery in Babylon, Sumer, the Indus Valley, and Egypt. The Greeks weren't even the first people in Greece to have slaves. The Mycenaeans had slavery centuries before them. But the Greek city-states throughout the archaic, classical, and Hellenistic periods all relied heavily on slavery. There were thousands of slaves, and often, they outnumbered free citizens. In Athens, there were probably up to five slaves for every citizen. In Sparta, there were as many as nine helots for each Spartiate. Slaves were seen like cars are seen today. Almost every household owned at least one. They were the ultimate all-purpose product, affordable, flexible, and best of all, each slave had different skills. The more valuable skills a slave had, the more valuable they were. Many slaves worked in the domestic context, cooking, cleaning, and maintaining the household under the direction of their master's wife. Some educated slaves taught the children. Some did accounting. Sometimes, slaves managed other slaves. A rich household could even lease out slaves to other people. Nicias, a 5th century aristocrat, leased over a thousand slaves to the state-owned mines and collected a fee for every day they worked. There were collectively owned state slaves too, most famously, the police force of Athens, which was comprised of Scythian slaves who kept order on the streets. The economies of the Greek city-states were based on slavery, a slave trading network built up bringing in slaves from as far as Syria, Russia and Africa. Pirates and bandits attacked ships or settlements and captured unfortunate souls for the trade. And the constant wars that the Greeks fought fed into this. Whole cities could be captured and the occupants sold into slavery. The most famous example of this were the Spartan helots. Largely comprised of the people of Messenia, the whole population was defeated in the 7th century BCE and enslaved, creating a large underclass of state-owned slaves who were tied to the land and treated harshly by the Spartans for hundreds of years. What was life like for slaves in ancient Greece? The helots in particular were poorly treated. They were ritually humiliated, beaten, and forced to wear dogskin clothing. They were force-fed alcohol until they were horrifically drunk, just to teach Spartan teenagers a lesson about alcohol abuse. Members of the Spartan Cryptaea would stalk and kill the strongest of the helots, just to remind them of their place below the Spartiates. Every now and then, the helots would rebel, but their Spartiate masters, who spent their lives training for war, brutally crushed these rebellions, leaving the helots without any chance of escape. In Athens, there was a wide array of experiences, depending on family, relative worth, and most importantly, a slave's purpose. Athenian domestic slaves were often treated well. They were often embedded in the family, helping the mistress raise the children, and sometimes even bearing the master's children. Whenever a family brought a new slave, they would be welcomed to the family with tasty foods, and whenever a slave died, they were often buried with the family. Particularly skilled slaves were even given a level of autonomy. They could live apart with their own family, after completing their normal duties, they could use their skills to earn money on the side, splitting the proceeds with their owner. Slaves could even be partially or completely freed, sometimes based on their master's goodwill, or more often, through taking out a loan to buy themselves. Once freed, they had a status similar to that of medics, not full citizens, but free to take part in everything but political life. One slave, Pazian, after being freed, became a banker and built a lucrative factory that produced shields. The labour for this factory? Over a hundred of his own slaves. After donating shields to the state during the Peloponnesian War, Pazian was even granted citizenship. A rare honour. But life wasn't all rosy for slaves though. They may have been valuable, but this is not the same as respected. They were property, and were at the whim of their owner, who wasn't necessarily benevolent. Slaves could be treated well, a valued part of the household, and they could also be beaten harshly, or even raped with no legal rights or recourse, and no punishment for the perpetrator. 
Some slaves could be hetirai, sought after, earning gifts and money for themselves and their master. Others could be pornai, used, abused, disrespected, and downtrodden. Masters were expected to look after their slaves and couldn't just kill a slave at will, but punishments for doing so were not as harsh as if they'd killed a citizen. Killing another man's slave, though, was a real legal problem. You were liable to pay fines and could be forced to compensate the owner. You had destroyed his property after all. The worst life for slaves, though, was to work in the mines. This was harsh, dangerous work with long shifts and cramped conditions, hardly seeing daylight. The Athenian mines at Lorium were estimated to have been worked by up to 30,000 slaves, some of whom were children. We can tell because archaeologists have discovered their bodies in collapsed mine shafts. What were ancient Greek attitudes towards slavery? What stands out is that for all the incredible flowering of Greek thought, all their notions of freedom and virtue, slavery went largely unquestioned. Even the greatest thinkers of the time, possibly of all time, who were known for questioning deeply held attitudes and beliefs, had a rather large blind spot towards slavery. Aristotle thought that some people were naturally slaves, they simply weren't born with the skills and intelligence needed to be free. From the hour of their birth, some are marked out for subjection, others for rule. And Aristotle wasn't alone. For most Greeks, slaves are seen like labour-saving machines, or at best, like a loved family pet. What's remarkable is that even the slaves themselves often agreed, accepting their lot in life, helping prop up the institution of slavery in which they were trapped. Freed slaves would often go on to buy their own slaves, and while some escaped from cruel masters, many clearly had great love for them. Slaves were often so loyal that in Athenian courts, their evidence was considered inadmissible unless they were tortured first, lest they'd lie to protect their master. Slaves, owners, traders, politicians, philosophers and farmers all were part of a system that relied on slavery being taken for granted. None could imagine that slavery might be wrong because it seemed so natural to them. They simply couldn't imagine that society could be structured in any other way. And it begs the question, how many beliefs do we take for granted today? In thousands of years when people look back at our civilization, will they think we have everything right? Do we have ethical blind spots too? This video covered the basics of slavery in ancient Greece. It looked at the importance of slavery to ancient Greek civilization. It looked at the lives of different types of slaves, as well as the helots of Sparta. And it also looked at the attitudes towards slavery in ancient Greece through the widespread cultural practices of philosophers, masters, and even the slaves themselves. Thanks to everyone for helping me out by subscribing, commenting, sharing, and supporting me via Patreon. Please keep it up. I really do appreciate it. What did owning slaves allow the Greeks to do? Where did the helots come from? Describe the treatment of the helots. Describe the treatment of Athenian slaves. Which type of slave had the worst life? Who contended that slavery was a natural state?